once in a while, they will run around in the box. It's amazing the amount of, right now we have a lot of staghorn sumac, soon to follow a smooth sumac. Um, the, the, honey product, the honey production this year has been really interesting because of the, we had a massive freeze back in, in May and it killed off a lot of the early foliage on a lot of trees being uh, the two predominant nectar sources that we will yield for honey are basswood and locusts um, in this part of the world. And I, in a, you know, it's, it's funny that it's in most, in most parts of the United States in the Northeast. But um, with that f major freeze, it killed off a lot of the early, early, you know, early foliage that the trees were producing and kind of set everything back. It looked to be a really productive year, but with that freeze, everything just kind of got reset and locusts reflowered, basswood reflowered, but for, has foregone putting out any flowers. So we don't have any honey this year from those two nectar sources and we're all kind of relying upon, the bees are working a lot of the, call it fringe stuff. We got a lot of Dutch white sweet clover, alcite clover, different types of clover that they've really been working. And just in the last few days, we've, because it's been so wet, you know, we've had four days in a row of no rain, but they're able to, they're starting to really hit the staghorn sumac and they got these big globs of sumac pollen coming in which is fun to see and it's amazing if you guys trap pollen how the you know the color and the varieties of pollen change day to day you know sometimes just because of what's coming and going and so you can really see the, the the variations of different plants you know that they're foraging on in particular to nectar or pollen so see if we can find this queen it's evading us all right, I'm gonna put my veil on. Just, they're just rowdy enough. Pollen. Yeah, it's all that sumac, that yellow or orange pollen. The yeah, yep. Where'd she go? I'll check the box one more time. You see her? Oh, oh no. Make sure that's not her. No, just a squished bee. There's times you don't find them. There are times, it's amazing how many times we come through these and there's all signs of a queen. Everything is there. Eggs, larvae, I mean just everything. Just recently eggs laid up looks like within the last 24 hours and you come to catch her on these, you know, on the catch day and she's nowhere to be found. And we, we usually, in this case, if we can't find her giving due diligence to, you know, go through like we're doing now, there she is right here, Reg. She's in the box? Yeah. Okay. We'll do due diligence to, uh, to at least locate her. And then, uh... Decent queen? Nice queen, yep. If we can't find her on the first pass through, we put everything back and I leave the plastic, you know, the JZBZ cell cup in the quadrant and come back tomorrow morning when I put queen cells in. And if I can't find her then, it's just amazing at how, you know, there's always a percentage that just, that either the queens drop off onto the ground or they fly off unbeknownst to us. You know, last week, my son, Amos, was here. He's, he's four. Uh, he, was helping, he was helping us and uh, we're just out doing our thing. And he goes, Dad, there's a, there's a queen bee. And I was thinking, okay, it's probably a drone or some worker, because there's a queen bee on the cover. And uh, we're all just thinking, yeah, well, anyways, I got up to check it out and there's this big old fat laying queen just walking around on the outside of the cupboard. It's like without a four-year-old or a young kid wandering around just looking at stuff as adults, we would have just overlooked that and it would have just been for naught. So it's important to have kids around, uh, you know, to help because they, they're looking at things and in ways that we don't, we don't look for. So <laughs> anyways, that was just a fun one. It's amazing 
you learn so much doing this with queen rearing because you see you see so many queens, you see so many things happening in, in a number of colonies, you know, these little micro colonies in a day that just boggle your mind in the way that, you know, where's the queen? How did that how did this happen? Why did that happen? Um, so you do expose yourself to so many, you know, different things. So many people think, you know, queens can't fly, they're mated. Well, I have news for you. Queens, mated queens, especially newly mated queens, will take flight fairly easily and they take right off, never to be seen again. Isn't that right, Reg? <laughs> yeah, I'll be right there, Ray. Gotta blow on the paint just to dr help dry it off. Whoop, if she cooperates, hang on a minute. Get her in there. We'll put it plug in and we'll go to the next one here. She looked mated, Ray? Yes. Oh, oh good. Lots of eggs and larvae. It's it's huge, but she's. Oh yeah, no, I, got I, lots of eggs and larvae. She does appear to be a mated queen. Yes, she does. Should I bring attendance to you, or you're gonna come over here? Um, yeah, if you want to, I'll. Yeah, if you want to bring them to me, Ray, because I got I got one. I got two to go through, or two to put attendance in. Most of this particular family, the K2 family line, is is dark, and these are probably one of the most I one of my favorite families because they 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 survived the collapse of my apiary two years ago, or what is it, three years ago, however long ago it was. They were the strongest family that I had, and they still are today. They are uh, very hardy bees they have a high mite they have a high tolerance and and if or i'm trying to quantify the resistance to That's mites fine. but the um they're just a they're just one they're just my favorite family person until something else comes along and look at the nectar dripping out of the combs you see it ray yeah yeah i've got it on my jeans yeah <laughs> it's amazing bring it on <laughs> <laughs> show us the honey let's see what it yeah, it's wonderful. It's a sumac. Such a nice honey. It's such a mild, nice, light, kind of creamy, but really just phenomenal flavor. And it's amazing that it produces so much. And it's just kind of always, you know, just out on the fringes of the little property and of fields. And you don't really realize how much of it there is until you start looking for it. Last one. And the attendants you want to get, I prefer attendants that are not, you know, too young. And you don't want them too old. Ooh, I need one more, Ray. She got away on me. Thank you. You want attendants that are kind of nice and plump, fat, healthy. Um, they'll live, you know, for a good long time, take care of the queens. And uh, when we're marking them, I have this bench. I try to keep them out of the sun. Usually what I do is accumulate 40 of them, bring them back to the truck. I got a box to keep them in out of the sun. We put them usually in the shade. But we try to, you know, just keep, keep the, sun, the exposure to the sun to absolutely a very minimum. We don't want to overheat them or stress them. So, you got one, Reg? With taking out the cups, the plastic cups, is uh, a nice, I don't know if you can get this, Fred, down in there. Just a nice, tight, hatched out, queen cell you know you can tell that they didn't tear it down the virgin emerged so everything was good there it's amazing at how many times um, with doing this that if you have faulty cells you know the pupa fails to you know if something happens she the pupa dies um, while it's pupating then you come back and there's just a dead pupa or they'll even just clean out the cell and you from the get-go there's just no op no opportunity for them to even have a queen so then they go into the emergency queen rearing mode but that's what i'm looking for is just a nice hatched out queen cell you know obviously the jay-z bz cell cups are unplaced like that and you just pull it off and there's just this nice round hole at the bottom nothing torn out on the sides good indication that the the virgin emerged and now she's now we're just looking to see if there was a successful mating
And the trick is obviously you don't use a lot of smoke. You don't want to chase queens off combs. You just kind of want to, you know, keep all the bees intact on the combs. And when you have frames, you know, that are all laid up like this, um, and on such a small amount of uh, space for the queens to run, never un underestimate where she could be. She could be crawling around anywhere, especially when they're laid up. I do like to look on the perimeter of combs like this, if I can get the sun in there, just I just want to see if there's eggs. So we're not, uh, I see eggs, right? So we got a queen in here. These little catch boxes, I don't know what I call, I call, that's what I call them, but they're just little boxes that I make up to hold the combs while we go through them and to keep them off the ground. I used to just kind of pile them up on the ground and then I felt like it was just safer to have them enclosed in a box because often the queens do run off the combs. Pretty much like this one has, if we don't find her. There she is, nice dark. Newly mated queen bee. We can catch her. Hang on a sec, Ray. There we go. We'll mark her. Oop, she just stung me. <laughs> That's actually like the second time in my entire history with beekeeping that I've been stung by a queen. Uh, interesting. <laughs> well, she's feisty as well. She's feisty. Wow, it's amazing. It's, I've only been, I only reckon, I only, it's early on, I've, I, I remember being stung by a queen. And I think it's obviously accidental. You just happen to put your finger or something right up at the stinger and it just finds its way into your skin. <laughs> <Find its way. laughs> but it's very abnormal for a queen to sting. And I, you know, she stung me right at the base of my, oh, there's the, at the, of my fingernail. So it doesn't really even hurt that much compared to a, a normal, a sting from a worker bee. Thank you, Ray. There it is. Just as easy as that. I think that what we'll do is the, the number of different types, like these are all the same families kind of here because we put distribute the queen cells all from the same um, frame or frame cell bar or whatever. Uh, so as we go through the yard today, we'll come into different breeders. And what's funny, you know, that these particular queens are darker. They're all mostly black. And then other families will be a little more tiger striped or more kind of like a, um, I hate to call them Italian looking, but <laughs> they are more of a, a golden kind of rusty color uh, queens. Um, but it's, it's just fun to see the varieties of phenotypes in the queens as, as, you, as you do this. You got one, Reggie? No, but if you're going over here, you gotta... Sometimes we get colonies that fail, you know, to have queens hatch and lay them up regularly. So what we do is we need to find frames of brood to help them out. So that's what we're gonna do here. Reg had a box that needed some brood. So I'm gonna take a frame of brood from each of these quadrants or two of the quadrants to help keep one of the queenless quadrants over here in the other box going. And it's at this point, when, once you get two or three rounds of queens through these quadrants, these mini nukes, they do kind of, it does help them to kind of thin them out a little bit. So if you can take a couple frames of brood, it doesn't hurt them. Or even a frame of brood and, and kind of move them around to the ones that are a little, uh, you know, where they need a little help. This one feels like... taking the bees with them? With them? Yes, we're going to take the bees. So here's a frame, perfect, perfect uh, combination. Nice frame of cat brood, eggs, larvae. Frame of cat brood, Reg. Frame of eggs. There, problem solved. When we're done catching, we keep the covers askew so we know that we've gone through them. If we have a queen that we need to come back and look for later, at, ooh, that's a nice queen. Yeah. If we have a queen that we have to come back 
we can't find her, we usually just leave the covers upside down. So there's just a, like everything in beekeeping, you got a system of manage a system of identifying certain colonies and a way of identifying certain, you know, things that have to be attended to, you know, with different ways of whether it's bricks or something written on the covers and some sort of a crayon or a marker or just leaving covers, in this case, just leaving covers askew in certain ways help us know, you know, what's, what's, uh, what needs to be tended to. Typically when we have a couple more people helping, what happens is I don't really get up much because there's so many queens being caught simultaneously. I don't have the luxury to move around so I'm always just sitting here marking, caging, putting attendance in, but today we're, we're short staffed. <laughs> it's funny to say, I don't, we, the volunteer help is, it's hard to, as the summer goes on it gets harder and harder to find them. The fun wears off, especially on hot days, no one likes to do this. Certain people, there's, there's certain people that try to avoid the hot weather I guess, but that's too bad for them. One more. It's amazing that the nectar in some of these got all this, you know, they're bringing in gobs of honey and others are not so much. All right. Onward and upwards. feeling about this one. I'm not a, I'm not Brian so I can't but I have just got I'm picking up good a good feeling that there's a mated queen in here. The frames feel right, the you know, the weight wise. The pantry's in good shape, so it's got plenty to eat. I wish the sun was working in our favor so I can see down into the combs to identify if there's... There are a couple of spots. I see larvae. Yeah, so we got a mated queen in here. There they are. Eggs everywhere. You got one, Reg? Here she is. You got her? Yep. Be right there, Reg. Do they need help with brood and bees? Oh, they just don't know the queen's lacking. I gotta find a new piece of grass. This is. Yep, like they're getting ready. Three for three, Troy. Three for three. A three out of three is three call three queens per four-way mating nuke. That's the that's the standard. The days where you're getting four out of fours and three out of threes and you run out of queen cages, that's a good day. <laughs> Sometimes the attendants, they get stuck. <laughs> Gotta help them out. They don't want to attend. They don't want to attend. The tenders. All right, let's go see what Reg has got over here. I gotta find a new piece of grass. This one is. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Let's see. If I can. There we go. Got a nice point to it. It's firm. I think you might have laying workers, Reggie. I, I'm gonna go down here in the sun and verify. Just all the number, I see a couple of drone, some cells, yeah, drone cells laid up. Yeah, you got laying workers. And I don't know if you can get this, Fred. You, so here's a comb with some laying workers and you got a cup. And if you have multiple eggs like that, I don't know if you can catch it right there at the bottom of the cup, there's an egg. There's actually two eggs, like a little, you know, attempt of whatever it is. And if you look in the drone, the drone comb here, you have, you know, six, four, three, two, one egg. Very, whenever there's an, a focus on drone like that, as opposed to worker comb, 
you don't have to look any further and know that there's laying workers. Another thing that you'd like to that I see too is is an egg laid on a cell of pollen, which I don't see here. But if you see that, uh, you know you don't have. You need to get. You need to be busy at getting a new queen. And it's deceptive because if you're just to look at these combs, everything looks queen right. Right? These some of these eggs are nice and straight, nice and you know evenly placed at the bottom, down at the apex of the cell. They're not at the side of the cell. But you know you got to go investigate a little further. And well, you know again you flip the comb and look at the drone comb here, it just laid up multiple eggs. I mean, that's that's the telltale sign of a laying worker. If it was a, even a queen, you know, let's say this is a drone laying queen, she's only going to lay one egg. And, you know, you'll have, multi, to find one egg in a, in, a, in a cup like this, or even multiple eggs in a cup is, ident is a sure tail, sure sign of a, a laying worker. So, always something to learn. So we got laying workers. So we need to get, uh, what if we were to add a frame of some brood that was from a queen right section? When we can find some Reggie, you know what I mean? We'll just come, we'll just, we'll just mark this, note it, and then we'll come back and give them. Did you go through the whole box? Yeah. Just a dud. No queens and even, well. This one you had to re uh, We had to give them brood. Yeah, we had to jumpstart that. This one, this one had laying workers and these two had duds. Oh, there's one right here. This side you have no, to go. Oh, okay. So there's hope for this then. There's at least 50% of a chance. Oh, I see new frames. When I do that, it's like, oh, shoot. I know. It's hard not to take it personal. It is hard. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. What do we got here? It's hard Watch to... Watch you. going to pull the first frame. I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's fine, Reg. Not a lot of bees in here. Got a frame of some honey. Very, the fact that the population is so weak is, it's like, all right, how, they just need to be, like I said, strong enough. In this case, there's some pollen, a little bit of nectar. Doesn't look good though. I don't have a good feeling that there's a queen in this colony. So we might have to get busy at adding a frame of eggs and larvae just to keep the vitality and forward momentum. Let's see. So I do have eggs. We just need to confirm if it's from a queen. So obviously, would do, do we see a queen on the comb? I don't see her yet. I want to ver verify that they're not laying workers. I'll look at one more frame here. I don't see her on the comb. So again, point. You know, here's the perfect example. Population on this frame is is nice. There's a nice covering of bees. They got food. They're not lacking for, for nutrition, and they're able to prop, you know, they're able to hatch out and, and a queen's able to mate and come back. But here's, again, here's the sign, right? When you've got a cup like this, and we have, well, I just, I, there's eggs in that, so there's no queen in here. They are trying to correct the problem without the main ingredient to fix the problem, that being the queen. Uh, workers trying to fix a, you know, a queen problem without any fertilized eggs. So these guys are in desperate need of a laying queen. And if you were, I often find that if you don't introduce eggs and larvae from a, from a laying queen or fertile queen into this type of a colony, these mating nukes, you come back and everything's bullets, right? It's all drone brood. Um, if you can introduce, if you can introduce some fertile eggs and larvae from the laying queen, the bees will cannibalize the the eggs, you know, that are unfertilized, so you kind of avoid the whole drone, you nasty comb, you know, being exposed to drones, where the, you know, they start to kind of build out the cells and everything gets messy. I'm just going to get in the sun real quick. I want to see that what this looks like. Yeah, that's, it, again, if you just, if you didn't know what you're looking at, you'd look at this thinking there's, there's, there's sure fight, there's got to be a queen, but um, overdoing this enough times and for a few years now, it's easy to identify with that one queen cell that there is, in fact, this is a laying worker scenario. So, not good for the average. But again, the weather's been so horrible where these matings, the queen's ability, you know, I can't help to think that with, you know, just four or five, six days of rain, uh, you know, showers, 
heavy showers, sh popping, you know, pop up storms, that there's going to be a lot of uh, there's a lot of circumstances working against these queens being able to mate successfully. So I don't get too frustrated uh, when you have takes like this, and it's really nothing I can do about it. You just do the best you can. So what we're going to leave a frame out on this. See if we can find a queen in here. The cut there for a second. Maybe we can redeem this box by finding a queen and at least have one mated queen out of the whole box. So the previous queen knows here doing her job and uh, this is a nice perfect example of a queen right mating nuke. Outside frame, eggs, boom, right there, you know, right, right in and amongst the pollen. One thing I like to see on an organized colony is the pollen is, for, you know, everything just looks like they're, they're everything's right, everything's in order. That uh, it's that they they have that they have that queen right vibe thing happening where it's just really easy to identify a lion queen. So without getting too distracted, let's just keep plugging along here. You know, take your time pulling up the frames. You don't need to rip them out. That's the biggest mistake I see a lot of people that aren't experienced with doing this. Is you know, depending up, it's more of a and in a feel, but you don't want to just like rip frames up. It's really a matter of how much can the bees take before you start aggravating them and causing them to really move around and, and start kind of losing their focus on what they're doing. You want them to kind of keep their focus on the work and uh, stay on the combs, and not run off the combs and where you have a hard time locating the queen. But surprisingly, well not surprisingly, but you know, these bees are, there's the queen. These bees are very gentle. They're not really aggressive today so far. So there she is. Pick her up. So what we'll do, I'm going to put some brood over in that last quadrant we're in to keep the laying workers at bay. We'll move over to my, oh, Ray, I'm sorry. I've been, you've been sitting here. Have you been? I want to do a second guessing on. Oh. Okay. That's the thing with doing these videos, you lose track of of everything. Oh, I need a little more paint. I got a new piece of grass, so it requires a second. Second application. Put her in there. And, oh, you got tendons? Thank you, Ray. So we got some help that just showed up. This things are going to speed up a little more here now. Thank you, Ray, for the attendance. Yeah, so can we see if we can verify. This is the, I think the most likely. But go to the sun. What does the sun say? I don't see eggs. No eggs in that yet, Ray. That's the most likely? I think so. And this one was up against the feeder? Yep. I'm just curious. That's sad. Without Mama Bee. No, oh, there she is. Look at that. It's a queen. She's not... Yes. It's interesting. Sure, yeah, she... So, this gets tricky. She looks mated, barely like, we yeah, we got one queen out of it, Reg. I got to move some brood over. Maybe we got, just started? yeah, she's just starting. What I'll probably end up doing is leaving her in here and let her go a whole nother round. Um, and, uh, you know, really proving that she is in fact going to be a nice mated queen as opposed to just taking her and, and finding out that she's poorly mated. So let's do this. I'll put the frame back. We'll put a cup back in this to, to, so I don't have to double put another queen cell in. She goes. And do you mind putting that cup back, Ray, when you're nope. good? That, okay, thank you. Brian, how you doing? Gonna be better. Do you want to be in a video today? Uh, don't matter to me. We got Fred filming hey, Fred? A, a video. How are you? Good. 
If we, uh, if you didn't want to be in the video, we'd have to put a smiley face at it over your face or something, or. Yeah, don't mind all. Probably hard, you're probably not gonna see me with a veil put on. Put a anyway. dog on. Yeah, that's right. I got a picture of a beagle. We just shoot it from on here. How's Ray doing? <laughs> Living the dream. You did with last week. You guys just disappeared, man. Yeah, you went down to Rhode Island or someplace, oh. Cape. Okay. Get this. Yes. Yep. Where'd the other frames go? Oh, there's one. Any signs? Hard to tell with the light, yeah, isn't it? I think it? this one does have a lane queen. It is kind of difficult when you're wearing a veil in the shady area. But... Here, let me help you. I was going to move this closer so you don't have to bend over so much. Quick look at that. I can either confirm or nor deny. Yeah, I see eggs, Brian. Okay, then I will find her. Sick them. I will find her very quickly. Hopefully she's not in the box like some of them were last. When year. Brian gets on a scent for a queen, stand back. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'm then the bounty hunter here. Yeah, very few escape Brian's wandering the long arm <laughs> of the law. <laughs> Usually some of the ones that are really dark get away, but... Not often. Not often. This is the last frame, so I'm hoping that I might turn this around. She's on it. I know, we I can't, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, now that this is gonna be documented, it's, it's important that we you know, find her. You know Let me see if I can check the... There she is, right there. Oh, see? It looks kind of small. Where is she, runty? Right there. Yeah, she is a little runty. Well, if she's laying, I mean, that's your choice. Oh. Well. Oh. But there's your queen. There she is. Yeah, she's a little runty. Looks like she, again, like just like they're just, some of these are just starting to lay. But the, Cause there was no, there was no eggs that were hatched either that I saw. And that, been raining. Well, exactly. They, they just start to get to lay and they haven't really gotten into full production egg mode yet, so their ovaries aren't big, fat, and happy. The way we like them. The way we like them. All right, on to the next one. That was, uh, what is it, two minutes? So, I guess minutes. someone was saying that it's hard to find testers modeling paint in these stores because kids are huffing them, huffing oh the paint. It's like, so I have a little public service announcement. Stop huffing paint, kids, okay? Because you make my job so much harder when I have to go around and try to find testers modeling paint that used to be at every hardware store known to mankind and now they don't carry it anymore. Now I gotta go searching high and low and open, this is a sad thing that's happening in America. Businesses don't open till 10 o'clock. I mean, come on, what's going on here? 10 o'clock? I mean, I get it, it's hard to find employees, no one wants to work. You know, or no one wants to work for money that they can't justify a livable wage. Well, it's like get rid of the fancy cell phone and the big flat screen TV and the ATVs and the, and the boat. You know, you don't need all the toys, but maybe you do. Either, either way. Ray needs them. Here, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ray. You've been to my house, you've seen all the trails that I have out in the woods. I know it. I didn't want to broadcast it, but you, it was tempting. Hiking party at Ray's. That's right. <laughs> We like to rosle each other here at the yard. Right, Ray? Ryan does. Wow. Well, it's amazing. I'm kind of an instigator, I guess. How over the years of doing this, um, uncapping and recapping, as I see a lot of, everything, you know, we got uncapping, uncapping, and all these holes in this brood pattern are, 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 are a result of, of uncapping, recapping. So, I mean, everyone's kind of on this rave of how, I'll be right there, Brian, how uncapping and recapping, you know, it's definitely a sign of hygienic behavior and. They're hot on the trail. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. She's eating it. I want to show that frame to people here, Reg, when you're done with it. I'll have you confirm, look at this one that I, just to double check here, Ray, Reg. So Reg found a frame where there's been a lot of uncapping and recapping and just, you know, and I think what's going on here is twofold. You have brood, some sort of virus in the brood on the comb. You have chalk brood here um, that's, that's, in, that's in the, on this brood. So the bees, you know, you got pupa that's white-eyed and you got chalk brood. 
So they're just cleaning up a, you know, they're just cleaning up a brood, a brood issue. It's funny, I usually, I haven't seen chalk brood in years, uh, but with all this rain, it's been popping up here and there in a few colonies. It hasn't been overwhelming, you know, I, I haven't seen it killing or causing colonies to collapse. It never really did, but it does zap the productivity right out of them. And it's funny because it can on it can set itself up or it can establish itself. This this quadrant, this mating nuke is full of bees. I mean, that's this would be a nice patch of brood if it wasn't compromised. But Joy. look at this rage. I think we got. Uh, what do you got, a queen? Yeah, not much of a queen. Yeah, I think. Where is she? She's on this one. She just went through. There she is. Yeah, look at this. This is a, this is an example of something. I think that they, this is a this is something I'm not going to keep. But look at the size of that queen. Garbage. So we'll just get rid of her. The and I think that she was, she was from something. There was just a cell that I just pinched here. So, either way, it's a culling process. <laughs>